Okay, so let me just say, look, I agree with you, okay? If you're on the other side there, that George may be lying. I've always said that. Humans lie, okay? That's what they do. They have an incentive, especially in this type of situation, to lie. So he very well may be lying at some point, and it's more than likely, yes, a lie by omission. But what is it? The biggest thing could be uh, people seem to be focusing on is the timeline and how it's not matching up to when he actually places his call. Well, unfortunately, you get like four different variations in that. You get it to where he's he says he's called non-emergency number uh, at this place and then or right before he gets to the... the uh, Oh, the damn clubhouse, or when he's at the clubhouse. But then there's the other one on the... Well, I'm not, I don't have it all pulled up right now. I'm still working on it. Where he's not connected yet. And this is after Trayvon has passed him. He says that as well. Where he seems to have actually connected uh, when he's on Twin Trees. And that's when he play, starts his call. Is actually connected to dispatch. So he's just confused. And I, I beg... <laughs> I ask anybody out there who at least is still trying to be objective uh, to try to remember exactly where you were at the moment when you were on the phone call that you placed yesterday, and exactly where you were, your position and all that, exactly when you said that, where you were. <laughs> It'd be impossible. But regardless, uh, people look at those variations and they say, oh, it's a lie. Well, no. It's not a lie. You can't say it's a lie yet. I think what he may be lying about there is something actually rather benign, which he thinks probably would hurt him if he said so. And I don't know why, because it doesn't. I, this is just a guess, right? We don't know. So that, But I'm saying that that seems to be the biggest problem. That area of when he was actually connected, and I believe it was after he was on Twin Trees Lane, is when he finally connected to the, uh, to the uh, dispatcher and not when he was at the clubhouse before Trayvon passed him because if that were actually true then it would be impossible for everything else to play out and we know that's not true one thing one way you know that if you look at the uh, the recreation video when he's at the cut through he starts talking about when Trayvon comes up to him what's one key thing he says there he talks about the hand, the waistband. Well, we know when that happens in the call, so all you got to do is match that up, and you'll see that he places his call when he's on Twin Trees Lane, not at the clubhouse. So what's the omission then? Oh, oh so what was the second one? The second one is uh, Piro and everyone is still on about the distance from where the fight started to where it ended. He explains that in his re in the recreation video. Right? He's not exactly sure where the fight started. Whether he's on the sidewalk itself or somewhat off of it. He could be a few feet off that sidewalk as he's walking back to his truck. He could be easily off the off the path like that. put Which accounts for some of the distance. Then he goes on to say that he's moving away from Trayvon going south. That accounts for some more of the distance. However much it is, we don't know. Then, as he's talking about where it happened, you can see he's kind of looking around and trying to figure out, well, it's down this way somewhere. He knows it's down further, so he's not lying about it. He knows it's down there. <laughs> so, that accounts for some of the distance. And then, when Trayvon gets shot, he must move up and away for some of the distance. And then, uh, the... When they give him CPR, they roll him over, and that accounts for some of the distance. Now, we don't have the exact measurements that I know of yet. Those haven't been released because they wrote down the measurements. So we'll know the exact distance. We're just trying to figure this out. We're getting pretty good, pretty close from the photos and then with Google Maps with that distance. And so it's pretty accurate, but it's not, it's not going to be uh, perfect. So... Well, no, well, no, and that's, I believe then that that distance is accountable. Well, regardless, when you're in a fight, you're, again, you're going to be able to tell me the exact positions of your body when everything happened? Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think so. So let's go, what do I think? What do I think George may have omitted that is 
actually benign and for some reason though he probably thinks he would be in trouble by admitting it I don't know why and that is people are discussing here over at the treehouse somebody uploaded this I'm glad they did or put a link to it uh, this is the neighborhood watch program there in Sanford that they provide the packet I'm sure this is what's in a uh, Wendy Dorval's little packet I looked at her slideshow there wasn't much on it and I'm hoping this is what they provide, which they probably it probably is. So we look through this. This is interesting. I only scanned through it, so I didn't go over everything. Uh, let me look at where is oh, I got some highlights on here. I don't know what I did with them. Oh, what the hell? Oh, it's on, I'm looking at the wrong one. I'm looking at the one on uh, the link here. Hold on. Okay, here's the one. Here's the PDF where you can highlight. No, you can't always highlight. All right, so look at this one. All right, what does this say? What you will do is, uh, what you will. I like this. I just this is funny. This is not actually meaning, uh, meaningful. And let's see, what you will not do is get physically involved. But look what it comes right after that in big bold letters. Right, the placement. This is sort of like a subconscious placement. You can get involved. Right, right after like that. I just think that's uh, funny like that. But all right, so let's uh move on here. This is what I think George may have done that he omitted. I think if it is true, if we, for argument's sake, we don't have any other evidence but George's statements, if it is true that Trayvon was hanging around that cut, uh, that shortcut area that's right next to Frank Taffy's property, right, which he called on before he said, and um, I think, and if we get his phone records, we may see him because he says again he says in that call he's trying to get through to dispatch it around that time right in that uh, interview with the the girl cop well anyways what uh, I think he may have done I think he may have called Frank first and this is stressed throughout the the packet here that you must immediately report but I don't think he immediately reported I think he called Frank first. Hey, you got your doors open or something? This, like you always do? That's what he says in the in the interview, doesn't he? This guy always leaves his door open or his doors unlocked or whatever. And that's one thing they talk about. How the crimes happen. Oh, because often it's people who just leave easy access. Well, I think he probably may have done that. If we get his phone records, we might see that happening. And he might think that that is going to cause him to be in some trouble somehow. And it's so stupid. It's, you wouldn't be in trouble for not immediately reporting. You just called the guy first because they talk about keeping contact with your neighbors. They stress the whole be friendly neighborhood thing, right? A lot through this thing. So that's all right. So we go look at some other things, right? Now this one's Piero because he's always like old oh, busybody. Yeah. Okay. Well, look. They tell him being a neighborhood watch participant does not mean you are being a busybody. Mm mm mm. Right? They just value collectivis collectivism, don't they? Right? <laughs> we look out for each other. Yes. Don't we grow up with that value put into like all our little cartoons? Hmm? And Sesame Street? <laughs> sure we do. It's programmed in us. Uh, when really we are not that way. We are more tribalistic than anything. But anyways, let's... Right, and it's smaller, not a huge collective of, like, communism. But, all right, uh, let's not get too political here. Let's move on. You should know. What do you should know? You, you should know who may be into drugs or gangs, who have juvenile delinquency or other family problems, who just moved into the neighborhood. You should know these things. <laughs> ah, a person behaving strangely, possibly on drugs. <laughs> who loiters around your street hmm interesting let's move around here ah the directions well if you're having trouble with directions always remember where the sun sets in the west <laughs> people are talking about ooh why didn't George get all tactical and write out his maps with hills and valleys like we learned in the military right <laughs> with your fist <laughs> Yeah, yeah. If he did that, you'd be like, "Oh, look at him! He thinks he's the that you'd push in the wannabe cop aspect, which is just bullshit." Anyway, be specific when providing 
information give the exact location. They stress this stuff. Exact location. The best possible description of the sucks. Right? So he wants to give that exact location and he moves, Trayvon moves his location. Ah, yes. If the situation is routine, not life-threatening, then call non-emergency number. What did George do? Call the non-emergency number. Where is it happening? Where? 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 Give specific directions. Give specific directions. Give specific addresses. Hmm, sounds familiar. Keep an eye on your neighbor's homes. Yeah. Well, there you go, folks. Alright, so what was next? Uh, the release of the... Where George um, recreates his yells for help and stuff. I haven't listened to this particular one, but I, I got the other one. Let me just read you what I wrote on it, because somebody asked if anyone has an opinion on it. Uh, yes, I have an opinion on it. It was a waste of taxpayers' money, and they screwed up. Make sure I'm recording here. Why in God's name they had him do it the way they did, I have no idea, except either it was incompetence, or they knew it would not help doing it that way, doing it the way they did, which implies more nefarious motives. I'm going with incompetence for now. The methodology was semi-good by calling dispatch and recording on the same equipment, on the receiving end in any way. Even better would have been to call from where that 911 caller called from, on that same phone, in the same conditions, and have George in the same location. But the real problem is they had George somewhat loudly, if you listen to it, it's, it's not very loud, somewhat loudly say, help, the phrase is help, that a bunch of times, really fast in a row, then, ah, ooh, <laughs> and or some crap a bunch of times, again, really fast, then help me a bunch of times, really fast, all in a row, like, never in the 911 call do we hear someone yelling like that, or anything a bunch of times in a row, really fast, it's stupid, what they should have done was tell him to try to recreate what he thought he yelled over a 45 second time frame then after that have him do it again and stress to him to do it much more loudly and scream as well George is a soft spoken guy so it's going to take some work to get those types of yells out of him you gotta think of like an actor right even actors they gotta work on that sort of thing so you gotta get that out of him right put him in the mindset of screaming for his life then they should do it again and try to have him repeat what they hear on the 911 call. So if they hear a scream that lasts for three seconds, then they should have him scream for three seconds. They could have gone on to, oops, I typo there. They should have gone on to do it a fourth time. Then by writing down each sound they think they hear as a scream, yell, help me, help, etc. In the order they appear over the exact same, uh, over the exact time frame of 45 seconds. And then have George repeat it in that same time frame. They should have had a guy on the dispatcher's end listening to what's coming in and listening to the 911 call to see if it's similar enough to assure that they're at least, they're getting it right, right? They're getting it, then they can end their little thing. But regardless, at the end of the day, though, audio forensics is still not a proven science, but at least they could have done it better. So that's what I think about that. Oh, okay, so I think this video's got along and long enough. We'll talk about more stuff later. Yeah, Sereno. Oh boy, oh boy. Alright, so that's it for now.